Hello and welcome to today's presentation on the Wilmington Ten, presented by the National Abolition Hall of Fame and Museum, whose mission is to honor anti-slavery abolitionists, their work to end slavery and the legacy of that struggle, and strive to complete the second and ongoing abolition, the moral conviction to end racism. The Wilmington Ten were a group of ten activists, consisting of nine black men and one white woman, who were wrongly convicted and imprisoned for crimes they did not commit in 1971 in Wilmington, North Carolina. The group comprised Ben Chavez, Connie Tyndall, Marvin Patrick, Wayne Moore, Reginald Epps, James McCoy, Jerry Jacobs, Ann Shepard, William Wright, and Joe Wright. They were convicted on charges of arson and conspiracy to commit arson after a protest turned violent. In which a white-owned grocery store was burned down, the case gained national attention and became a symbol of the injustices faced by Black Americans in the criminal justice system. The story of the Wilmington Ten began in 1971, when Wilmington, a predominantly Black city, was experiencing racial tension due to several factors, including the desegregation of public schools. Residents were dissatisfied with the lack of progress seen in their lives. Especially after the passing of legislation like the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1961, many individuals were still in desperate poverty, and the recent memory of the assassination of Martin Luther King led racial tensions in the city to escalate. This racial tension led to the arson of several businesses, which then led to white terrorist groups like the KKK to begin patrolling the city, which caused many clashes between themselves and the black residents. Additionally, the integration of schools in 1969 in Wilmington led to the closure of a black school known as the Wollaston Industrial High School, which had been a source of community pride. The layoff of all of its teachers and administration, and then the sending of its students to white majority schools, caused upheaval in the community. This led to many students clashing with their white counterparts and also with the police. On February 6, 1971, a protest took place in which Black students and community members gathered to demonstrate against the school board's decision to fire Williston's Black teachers and principal. The protest turned violent, and a white owner-owned grocery store called Mike's Grocery was firebombed and then burned down. When firefighters responded, they claimed to have been shot at from the roof of the nearby Gregory Congregational Church. Several black activists and students had been meeting at the church at this time. As rioting broke out in the neighborhood, which caused the death of two people, the North Carolina governor called the National Guard to forcefully enter the church on February 8 and arrest the supposed perpetrators of the shooting and arson. Ten individuals were arrested and blamed for the crimes. Nine were bla young black men in their early 20s or 18 and 19, and one was an older white woman who was an anti-poverty worker. They were all arrested and sentenced. The prosecution's case was built on the testimony of only two witnesses who claimed to have seen the defendants at the scene of the crime. However, the witnesses later recounted their testimony, stating that they had been coerced to say so by the law enforcement. However, by then it was too late. Despite the lack of evidence, the Wilmington Ten were convicted and sentenced to a total of 282 years in prison, with their individual sentences ranging anywhere from 29 years to 35 years in prison. With the exception of a lesser sentence for Ann Shepard, who was 35 at the time, the case sparked outrage and protests across the country, with many people believing that the Wilmington Ten had been targeted for their activism and race. Regardless, all ten served nearly a decade in jail before an appeal won their release. The case gained international attention, also, with even Amnesty International working to reverse their sentences in 1976 by providing legal defense counsel to all ten defendants. This led many to classify the Wilmington Ten as political prisoners. In 1978, Governor James P. Hunt commuted the Wilmington Ten's sentences, citing evidence of prosecutorial misconduct and a flawed trial. However, the Ten were not fully exonerated until 2012, when the North Carolina Governor Bev Perdue issued a pardon of innocence, stating that the Ten had been wrongly convicted and imprisoned due to racism and political repression. However, by then. Four of the ten had already died. Therefore, the Wilmington Ten was a landmark moment in the civil rights movement, and brought attention to the systemic injustices faced by Black Americans in the criminal justice system. 
The case also highlighted the government's use of the criminal justice system to suppress political dissent and activism. The Wilmington 10 case is a reminder of the importance of fighting for justice and holding those in power accountable. It also serves as a cautionary tale of the dangers of political repression and the need to safeguard the rights and freedoms of all citizens, regardless of their race and beliefs. Thank you for attending today's presentation. Please help us by completing a brief survey at the link on your screen and also in the video description. Your feedback will help Nehoff receive funding and help plan future projects. Additionally, please contact Nehoff with any questions or comments, or if you're interested in learning more about the organization. Don't forget to follow us on social media, and we hope to see you at our next presentation. Thank you.